No, I'm 64. I think it's about time I had a fling. I mean, have you seen this scenery? Are we in Iceland? Are we in the Alps? It's better than both. We're actually going to go to Portugal right now, put the weather for us. This is going to cancel the flight. So I'm going to combine two routes. One is the Highland Cross. That's coast to coast in a day. Stacy and Tony from Alaska on bikes. And one sort of an over the sea to sky. Put them together and let's call that the Highland Fling. This is Bewley. It's always struck me as a lovely town. There's a ruined abbey, but I'm not here to play tourist, not at 5 a.m. I'm here because Bewley gives its name to the Bewley Firth up by Inverness. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get down and get my wheel in the water, but this is tidal. This is definitely the East Coast. And now I hear the West calling. Today's part of the ride is loosely based on an event called the Highland Cross. Very loosely. That's a, a west to east race, so I'm doing it the wrong way around. Also it involves running and then biking. And I'm not even on the bike course. I'm on a different road. But you get the general idea. This is my route across the Highlands, and I'm thinking about it in four stages. The easy bit is the first 18 miles to the town of Cannach. Soon after, I'll head off-road and climb into Glen Affric proper, joining the track along the south shore past the two locks. That's another 18 miles. The Highland Cross event doesn't go this way, it follows the road on the north shore. Then the track gets tougher, passing a remote youth hostel to a bothy at around the 42-mile mark. Some of this might be rideable, but a four mile section will not be. It's a push or carry before a decent track and a main road to my overnight. Or at least that's how I think the next 55 miles will go. And my fling is not the end of it because tomorrow the plan is to go over the sea to sky, the hard way. Hard because there are two big climbs. First is to Bielach Rattigan, up and over to the Glenelg Ferry, then the climb over Bielach Oodle into sky. I'll head to the railway station at Kyle of Lochelsch by the Sky Bridge and take the train back to Bewley. All that's tomorrow. With the road section behind me now, I need to focus on getting into Glen Affric. It's often called the most beautiful glen in Scotland. 10,000 years ago, after the last ice age, Glen Affric was colonized by Scots pine and is now home to the third largest area of Caledonian pine in the country, along with birch, rowan, aspen, willow and alder. No wonder it holds a host of conservation designations. With so much of this country covered by commercial conifers, it is an absolute joy to ride through a true mixed forest like this. Old pines mixed in with broadleaf trees. It is an absolute joy to be here. So beautiful and so green. It's also now the route of the Afric Kintail Way, which I'll follow to the end. That is built for walkers and our access rights allow me to cycle it. We've reached the head of the loch, which means the trees on this side, the nice broadleaf trees have stopped, but soon we'll be meeting the off-road track that is on the other side of the loch. Good morning. Good sir. Okay. <laughs> good night at the hostel last night, was it? Uh, very good. Bikes, and now e-bikes, have always been a popular way to the base of the five Munro Mountains that encircle the head of the glen. 
Hill walkers and through routers are the customers at one of Scotland's most remote youth hostels. But you don't have to stay here. There's an open invitation to anyone who's passing. Oh, this is all right, isn't it? I think we'll have a cup of tea. Looking at the numbers, I've been going just over six hours and I've done 40 4 miles and I have 14 one four to go. But those 14 will be the hardest of the day and probably the slowest. So they could take me another five hours, quite possibly. It must be strange running a place like this because you've got to be happy in your own company to spend all day, every day with just this all around you. But you've got to also be ready to socialize because you're sharing this space with different new people almost every night. That must take a certain type of person who can, who can handle that. I was going to knock on the door, but I don't want to disturb him. I think the conversation is probably optional. Well, there's no doubt about which way that river's flowing. It's definitely out towards the east coast. If I dropped something in here, if it survived, it would end up somewhere in the North Sea. However, soon we will be at Scotland's watershed and that will no longer be the case. This really is territory better suited to walkers and mountain bikers, but that's why I like coming here on a gravel bike. It's pretty much at the limit of what I can ride on a bike like this, and sometimes just a bit beyond because soon I'm expecting little of the track to be rideable by me, even on this Vielo gravel bike. When I reach Kanban Bothy, and that's it, just ahead, it all changes. How about this? Stacy and Tony from Alaska on bikes doing the Highland 550 route. Didn't stay, but great Bothy. Congrats to HT550 racers. HT550 competitors Liz and Roisin who made us feel very, very inadequate with their daily uh, mileage. They left at 4 a.m. This really is a fantastic spot for a bot. When it's all about the race No turning back Too late Don't think we've quite got the right bikes. <laughs> There is uh, another three, four kilometer complicated and then yeah. just the downhill, it's... Uh... Yeah, I did it 25 years ago. Oh, okay. Many years ago. Many years ago. You're nearly at the Bothy. The oh, Bothy okay. is very good. Oh, great. Okay. No time to waste, cause my time is now. You often hear people say, or write in magazines, ah, oh, but the view is worth the effort. It's a cliche. And then you see something like that. You know, it's coming back to me that this really was rough 25 years ago too, because I did it with Alistair. I don't have any pictures of it. He's the chap who lives in France now, and with whom I did the other cross Scotland and back in a weekend. We both had panniers, and his were oddly waterproof ones. He was carrying the food and a bottle of whiskey, which smashed in the pannier, and we didn't know because it was waterproof until we got to the youth hostel. And in the morning, we had whiskey flavoured muesli and that gave it quite a kick. There's no two ways about it really, I am walking my bike down a staircase. Good for walkers, not so good for cyclists. I find myself wishing I had a full suspension mountain bike but to be honest I actually don't think I could manage some of that.
And then, out of nowhere, two friends who run a Fort William bike shop. We were actually going to go to Portugal right now, put the weather forecast <laughs> to come to the cancel the flight. It's better here. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's better here. I saw some pictures from somebody in Spain. We're kind of walking around in six degrees. And oh, Mallorca, yeah. that was it, and it's yeah. raining. Yeah. yeah. So that was two and a half hours of full on hiker bike. Maybe a little more allowing for a bit of camera stuff, but oh my word. Not the easiest of routes, but then it wouldn't be on the Highland Trail 550 if it was. The last 10 miles are easy. A rough track, then tarmac to the campsite at Morvik, and I can see the sea. I've crossed from east to west coast in under 12 hours, mostly off-road. Now, at a different state of the tide, I would be in the sea. So, I'm going to count this ride done, <laughs> and I'm well fed and now I'm going to need to find a bed. And then to a place where whiskey muesli was accidentally invented sometime in the mid-1990s. I couldn't find a blue plaque. There is, however, a terrific view, and tomorrow promises even more. By comparison to yesterday, today is a short day than it needs to be because really it's only a half a day if I'm gonna catch my train. This is the first of today's two big climbs, Mam Rattigan. I wrote it first in 1996 and wrote this piece with Alistair for the Sunday Times. It was where his coast-to-coast -coast holiday started. In 2014 I took a team from Cyclist Magazine this way, so I do know what lies ahead. I think that's the school bus. This was a rough military road for the barracks that guarded the sea crossing to Skye, but after 1772 it fell into disrepair, according to the great engineer Thomas Telford. He did a survey of potential candidates for a better road in 1802 and didn't think much of this one, but the alternatives were worse. So this is where he ended up putting his road. Interpretation here, the table here for the Bialach Rattigan. And the route I took yesterday came in just behind all those. So those mountains are the ones you saw when I was coming down the glen. Okay now, fun fact here. Glen Elg, turn it round, start at the other end. Glen Elg. It's the only palindrome on the west coast of Scotland. That's also part of the reason there is a place on Mars, yes, Mars, named Glen Elg. NASA's Curiosity rover planned to visit the area twice. It's also the name of a geological feature in Canada, which looked a bit like a feature on Mars, so NASA called it Glen Elk. There can't be many places which can make this boast. Okay. There you go. That's all he wanted, you know. I wasn't saying hello or anything. Just wanted me scorn. Hello you, still here. This is the last manually operated turntable ferry in the world. The men turn it by hand so the vehicles can drive on and drive off. It was built in 1969 and is kept running by the fares, about four pound for me, and donations. It crosses a stretch of water that shares a name with the village on the far bank, Carl Ray, and tidal streams here can run at nine knots. Gentlemen. That really is a piece of engineering history. Now we're on Sky and another big climb. Almost as tough as the one I did this morning. This morning zigzags on Man Ratigan were intimidating, but when you look at it, the 
dead straight nature of the Carl Ray climb seems even more so. And yet when you're on it, it's not that bad. I'm not even in the top ring. The numbers agree. This is Birlach Udl, and there's 284 meters of climbing with a maximum gradient of 17.7%. This morning's Birlach Ratigan had 52 meters more elevation gain, but the maximum gradient was lower. Both climbs average 7%. Tough, but a worthwhile climb. And now, downhill towards Broadford, and then main road to get back to the train. All right, keep my eyes open for the station. Never up oh, there it is down there. Now I'm slightly apprehensive about this. I booked it online and reserved a place for the bike. You can't book the bike on the app, but you can if you are traveling, if you ring up the call center. But hopefully I'll not need to have done that. All I have to do is collect my tickets. That's obviously where it says tickets. 90 CH. XH. Right, well, that was really smooth. Just needed my booking reference and my credit card. My Highland Fling has probably been the best two day ride I've done in ages, and the two and a half hour return journey is also pretty special. If you're looking for a more gnarly across Scotland and back in a weekend, then take a look at this video. Or for more adventure cycling, this one is a good place to start. And I'll see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>